Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. I'm going to be showcasing some isopods I just received. These come from David Ferelli and Sparrow. So thank you to both of you for these lovely isopods. These, you may or may not recognize, these are Porcelio Scaber Piebald. Pretty cool morph that I haven't worked with yet. And these particular ones are noted for their irregular pale markings on the wild type coloration. And there are, of course, other types of piebald. You can do a piebald orange and so on. And I actually made a video about some piebald ones that I found in my wild type culture at one point. But unfortunately, they didn't seem to breed true. But this particular strain does. And so I'm excited to be working with these. Let's let these go. These are some nice mature specimens here, as you can see. Very big reproductive age already. There goes the first one. And one thing I love about many of the Porcelio Scaber morphs is their, uh, their variability. The piebald morph, for example. My least favorite morphs of Porcelio Scaber are ones like uh, the Dalmatian that don't show necessarily uh, a lot of patterning. But this one, you can see really a decent amount of patterning on it uh, in many cases. And it does vary too. But I, I like the fact that the patterning is pretty robust in many of the individuals. I'm sure as with many uh, morphs, I'd probably have to cull it somewhat. But I think it's the, just higher expression tends to be the rule as opposed to Dalmatians, which often turn out to just be kind of a a pale specimen with just a few little flecks on it after a while. After a few generations, that's, that's fairly common, and you'll get some good ones and some variation. But this is just one that I really like because it tends to show more patterning, and, and you see some with less and whatnot. But looking forward to working with these. We've got lots of different... Uh, ages in there. Some of them are juveniles, which is great. You always want to get some juveniles in a new culture there. They tend to be pretty adaptable and you know you're going to get some good lifespan out of them, but uh, a mixed group like this is great. Some adults, some younger juveniles, most of which are at or approaching reproductive age. That's, that's pretty perfect. Because as with Many isopods, Porcelio scaber, can reproduce. Ooh, look at that high expression individual right there. Oh, I want to get another good look at that. I'm going to pick that up if I can. Um, I just dropped it right back into the, the bin there. But I think I see it. If I can get to it. Is that the one that I saw? I'm not sure. But that one has a lot of expression there. The dark head. And the tip of the pleon is dark, but the rest of it's pretty pale with just a few markings. Love that. Excellent example of the high expression that I was talking about. And there's some, some excellent exemplars in there of that trait. And before I show you some other isopods that David and Sparrow sent me, I wanted to give a shout out to my patrons at Patreon. I couldn't do what I do without you. One of my favorite things to do in the whole world is to share my passion and what I have learned about isopods, other arthropods, reptiles, amphibians, fish, different animals with you, my viewers. And my patrons at Patreon make that possible. They make it uh, much more possible for me to do a wider variety of things than I could ever do without your help. So thank you so much. And if you don't support Aquarimax yet on Patreon and you'd like to for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link at the end of the video or in the description. All right, these next ones I'm going to put here are also Porcelio Scaber, a morph I don't have yet. This is Porcelio Scaber Red Calico. Reminds me a little bit of the lava, which so far has been my favorite morph of the, the species, of the Porcelio Scaber species. And it's, it's similar in some ways. Pattern distribution is a little bit different, but the, the color scheme is similar. I really like that. This is These are again from David Ferelli and Sparrow. 
Very cool. Larger adult individual there. See if we can get some good look at that one. And there's a younger one there. See, one thing I love is the resiliency of isopods. This package was supposed to be priority today, and those of you who have been using the post office know there have been a lot of delays for quite a while now. Off and on, sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's not so fine. And this one, this package spent five days in the mail, but it was packed perfectly well, and the isopods so far have all been in perfect health. I haven't seen a single uh, dead on arrival at all. They're all looking great. Yeah, these are all looking great. So there we go. Put those in there. One thing I wanted to show you is kind of my labeling system. This is not done uh, very neatly, but the information is all there. You can see I've got the species, the morph, when I received it, when the culture is established, basically, and then where it came from. And then I've been putting this, and I can't remember who suggested this. I, I usually limit food for new cultures very, you know, I limit a lot. But since my kids help me do these, uh, do the maintenance in my cultures, I've been taking to adding this sign to the new cultures. And uh, I think it helps because most cultures need a little while and they have enough food in the form of leaf litter and whatnot, as I've talked about in other videos, to do quite well for some time. And if you give them some time to reproduce and for the culture to settle, you're less likely to have problems with mold and with pests like mites or fungus gnats. If you just don't put any food at all beyond the substrate and leaf litter for a varying amount of time, depending on the size of the culture and so on. So I've been labeling them this way and I think it's helping my kids and it's helping me uh, have better success with these new cultures as they get established. All right and now on to the third. This is a different genus. This is Amadelidium vulgare Santa Lucia and this is a morph a little bit like Punta Cana but I think with uh, maybe more variety and you can see there's a really nice orange individual there. My understanding that uh, the, um, which strain was it? It was the tangerine morph of Armadillidium vulgare was isolated from Santa Lucia. But they, they tend to produce a lot of different individuals. You see that one looks almost like a magic potion there, that, that white one there. There's a lot of variety naturally. This is not a mix of morphs. It's a naturally occurring sort of variety that was collected from the Santa Lucia locality, which I believe is off of the coast of Spain, if I'm not wrong. It could be. That was my recollection. So let's take a look at these. Oh, they're gorgeous. It's almost like a gem mix, but natural. All this variety is just something that occurs naturally in the locality. That's, that's fantastic. Beautiful orange one, another beautiful orange one, some wild types, some of those white ones. And really that, that looks kind of like a magic potion, but there are some differences as well. It's, it's a really cool look. I really like that. That looks like. Huh. It's pretty fantastic. There's a nice rich orange one and a more wild type individual there. Oh, wild type fell, but it fell right into the 
enclosure, so I'm not concerned about it. Another white individual, another wild type, a couple of white individuals there. And there's an orange one. Oh, what's going on with that one? Ah, I'm afraid I dropped it. That's, it had some really interesting markings on it there. These are pretty cool. That looks like the last one. I think some of them already fell into the bin there. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with a lot of isopod content. Feel free to share, rate, comment. If you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell and choose notifications all so you don't miss my next video.